working? Are you organized? Are you caring? Are you creative? Are you ambitious? What are your strengths? What are some things that you are really good at? So then on the other side of the spectrum, what are some of your weaknesses? Are we disorganized? Are we decisive? Do we procrastinate? Do we leave things to the last minute? What are some areas that uh, we need room for improvement in ourselves? So in Hemi, last question, he boy mokati em emma, what motivates you? Uh, what is your drive to succeed? Um, is it is your motivation the fact that you want to support your family? Is it that you want to build a nice house? Is it that you want to give back to your community? Can motivation he can be all different things. Um, and it's different for everyone. Masse inge can motivation bear what drives us the he can shia and that will uh, Let's also uh, tell uh, me questions. He keep this in mind because this will be important for later on interview skills. Can say who not. Some other things that we want to keep in mind. What do you value? Throw. Uh, what uh, do you value? Your relationships. Is it your faith that you value the most? Um, do you value having nice things? Oh, scooty, chadeo, I want the newest, latest model of the of the scooter of the scooty or. Or a car, maybe those are things that you value. So, mm, uh, how well do you know yourself, Kanti? So, how well do you, how do you react to challenges? Um, when you are faced with challenges, do you stop first and think before you act? Uh, do you make a list of things to do? Do you just cry, <laughs> sit down and cry in the corner? Um, or do you blame other people? How do you react to difficulties in your life? If we haven't had the chance to uh, stop and think and ask ourselves these questions, I would strongly encourage you to do that. So I'll give you some more questions that you can use for self-reflection. Uh, Self-awareness, why is it important? Self-awareness, it's actually truly so powerful. Um, it matters for our professional growth, and it also matters for our personal growth. Researchers have studied uh, successful people all over the world. And the one of the most common attributes that they all have in common is they are more confident, they are more creative, they make sound decisions, that means they make good decisions, they're better leaders, they work better in teams, they're more flexible, they're more resilient, they're also less likely to cheat and lie. And coming back to our topic for today, uh, self-aware people are uh, more effective communicators. So, uh, which is why I wanted to take some time to talk about what self-awareness is because once we know ourselves really well, what motivates us, what we value, how we react to challenges, will be able to be better communicators and will also be able to be primed for uh, later for our um, professional growth uh, when it comes to interviewing. All right, so how can we develop better self-awareness? Um, uh, self-reflection. Um, we can also look at a couple of personality assessments. I know this uh, week's topic is um, entitled personality development. So along those lines, if we um, take some time to learn a bit more about who we are ourselves, um, I've put up some links here that you can also check out. Um, so and then the third thing that you can also do is uh, to ask people for feedback. Masse, uh, we shouldn't just ask anyone for feedback, right? We should ask for feedback from people whom we trust, uh, perhaps uh, a trusted friend or a trusted family member um, or a trusted uh, teacher, professor, um, because we would like honest feedback um, and constructive criticism. It's, it's uh, really, really important for our growth. Um, people who will be able to understand our story, our background, but also encourage us to uh, step out of our comfort zone and um, uh, push ourselves to be better. So asking 
I think for feedback is important. Masse, it's good to ask for feedback from people whom you trust. Okay, so Nitin Khan and I said that I would give some questions um, that you can ask yourselves uh, during your self-reflection time. The hand screen, I hand can show uh, uh, So three, uh, some questions that the hand can start talking about. What are three of your strengths? What are some areas you need? You feel you need to improve? What do you value most? Um, think of an experience that you're proud of. What skills did you gain or use uh, during that time? What interests or skills uh, would you like to develop in the future? Um, she, she talked about how uh, even as an educator, we all have to, I mean, we're all part of a lifelong learning journey. So uh, even now we're on, our students are on the precipice of a new chapter. Just because you're finished with college doesn't mean that you're going to stop learning. Uh, in the same way, we're always pushing ourselves to learn more. So question five, uh, we're always, we should always be looking for new skills to develop. So number six, what situations or people trigger your negative feelings and how do you react to that? Um, number eight, what are some different roles that you play? A chensu student, uh, maybe we're the main uh, bread earner in the family. Um, we, some of us might be athletes. Maybe we're a group leader, KTP, TKP, Lampangatipo, YMA, Lampangatipo. We all have different roles to play. What are those roles? What do you, how do those roles affect you? Um, how do they affect your self image and uh, how you interact with the world around you? Um, Heng Zong Zong He, uh, if you haven't had a chance to think about these questions, I would strongly encourage you. Um, maybe after today's session to think about it, jot it down, um, and then that will really help you uh, prepare for um, your, your next stage in life. Okay, so self-awareness, next, um, let's talk a little bit more about communication. Communication, we don't wanna just, uh, it's not just communication, we want to focus on effective communication. So, um, what do we mean by effective communication? What is effective communication? Uh, communication, uh, it's a two-way process. It's um, me as the person speaking um, as an example, but it's also um, me as the person listening. So while you're speaking with me, I should be, I'm part of that communication process by, as the listener. Um, so we have two roles. Uh, there, communication is a two-way street. Um, when we talk about effective communication, we're talking about um, uh, the information that we share with other people so that they can understand what it is that we are sharing with them and what is being shared with us. Um, communication, he can stress that it is the top soft skill that is desired by employers and organizations, not just here in India, but the world over. Um, the uh, reports they can end on, whether it's a UN report or World Economic Forum reports, uh, whatever reports we look at, um, consultancies, the Pohyan, and they're, they're always giving reports about what employers want. You will always see effective communication on the top of that list. All right, so let's, let's learn a little bit more about what effective communication entails. There are four main types of communication. Uh, we all know this. There's verbal communication, nonverbal communication, by which we mean body language. Uh, there's written communication and uh, visual communication as well. So verbal communication, uh, we mean uh, when, we're, when we're speaking, right? It's not just what we're saying, but it's how we're saying it. So when we're also speaking, we should be clear, concise. We should be considerate. What does that mean? That means we have to be aware about how the other person is receiving our message. And as the speaker, we should be listening, we should be aware of that. So on an um, active listening, I feel like I'm just speaking with a screen through interaction. Um, I'm trusting that I can see some of the videos and I uh, in facial expression at Jungin, I can uh, see that um, you're, you're listening and picking up on what I'm saying. And so that really helps me as the speaker as well, understand 
um, and give me clues, cues to know if people are understanding what I'm saying or not. So then if we're practicing active listening, that means that we are um, trying to understand what the person is telling us. So, um, um, we shouldn't be thinking about what we're going to say next, right? Oh, oh uh, I have this really great point. I have a really great quote that I want to share with them after they speak. That shouldn't be what we're doing. Rather, active listening can practice on, uh, we should be genuinely listening to the message that they're saying, um, giving cues to let them know that we're listening also, right? Oh, oh, they can emo, zoom up. Well, we can also do that by um, the the quick reactions, the boy omaturo. So uh, people know that even through these types of online communication, we need to give feedback to the speaker by by uh, even a, a quick emoji or a quick emoticon. Um, so that's what we mean by verbal communication. Nonverbal communication is a lot of what you're seeing me do right now. Um, our how we use our body, um, our facial expressions. Uh, are we? Is our face? Um, are our facial expressions conveying our feelings? Are we, um, are we smiling? Are we laughing? Are we frowning the whole time? Um, are we, you know, what kind of emotions are we conveying to both the listener and us as the listener uh, to, the, to the speaker? Um, personally, as a communicator, I use my hands a lot. I'm very, very gesticular. Um, so, uh, but it's also important um, so that you don't think that I'm just a, a robot with, you know, with no expressions, no movement. If we're always still, then it can become very uh, boring, uh, very monotonous for the people who are listening. Um, it's not as engaging, but at the same time, uh, we should be aware that we shouldn't use too much hand movements, right? Because then that can become distracting, um, especially if we're giving a presentation and communicating for presentation is a completely different uh, topic altogether. Um, just a quick uh, uh, tip is that if we're giving a presentation um, and we're using our hands too much, it will become extremely um, distracting for the people who are watching. Or if we're very nervous and we're holding a piece of paper, right? that can be a very telling sign for the people who are uh, watching and listening to us. So we have to be uh, very aware of all of our verbal as well as our nonverbal cues when we are communicating. Okay, what about written communication? Um, written communication, we're talking about uh, in this day and age, we're really talking about emails. Um, there are professional and casual type of emails that we can send. We're talking about our messages, WhatsApp out there, um, even short messages, uh, social media, gun message there. Uh, we're also talking about formal letters. Um, and now we're talking about emojis and acronyms as well. Um, so written communication, uh, as um, uh, you know, our cohort is finishing their, um, you, as you're finishing your, your bachelor's, um, you'll all be pros at written communication, I'm sure. Um, and now that you are about to embark upon your job search or your graduate studies, um, you will be honing these skills even further. Um, it's, it's ex extremely crucial to be aware of um, etiquette for professional as well as casual uh, written communication. So now, um, again, as you are about to embark on your job search and interviews um, and the like, uh, your tone of your uh, written communication, he, um, it, it's going to be very, very important that you keep an eye out for that. And so I would like to share with you a quick, a quick example of what we mean by professional or casual. Um, but before I go on, am I going too fast? I'm just being, trying to be aware of our time and uh, I'm trying to get through as much as possible. Are we okay? I'm excited here. Wrong, 
ka chong ran nu tu zan min lo xue mei dong nian mo min lo ying lo zai dong nian all right so let's take a look at a uh, written an example of written communication both professional and casual all right okay the han screen a han kan chia tei ve kan ngao kan chia tua kan ye om uh this would be an example of uh an email a message with a professional tone dear miss biagzuali i hope you are well it was great speaking with you yesterday i'm looking forward to working together in the next few months can you please share the contact information of the other members in the committee i would like to share the meeting minutes thank you in advance regards moiral tim All right. So, what do we see here? We see here that the address—it's very formal, dear Miss Thoreau—and um, then there is a, a formal greeting. I hope you are well. I hope this message finds you well. Tito po kan mo tenga, kan mang tenga. We are extending a a very formal but warm greeting. It was so nice speaking with you yesterday. Um, so, and they're conveying their excitement about working together in the future. Committee and om hawa Thoreau. Uh, so then they're politely asking for information. Uh, can you share, please? They're uh, the polite uh, way of asking. Can you please share the contact information of other members in the committee? So then they're explaining why they would like that information. And finally, to pakan they're um, thanking them in advance, and then they're signing off formally. Their regards and on on uh, on sign off from. Okay, what about something that might not be so appropriate? Uh, let's look at a casual example. All right, can screen a can mua can chair talk me um. Hey, Miss B, what's up? Smiley face emoji. OMG, I'm so happy we spoke yesterday. LOL. I can't wait till our next meeting. Uh, I need the phone number and email addresses of the other members in the committee so they can have the meeting minutes too. Send it to me ASAP. TTYL memes. All right. So, would is this an example of a good message? Yes, Maybe. Yes. It, sorry. Yes. It could be yes if Miss B is your friend, right? And you're talking about a weekend hangout session that you just had. Um, if Miss B is your girlfriend and Um, you know, you're just catching up. This is completely fine. To our friends, we'll send emojis. Um, we'll use acronyms, um, uh, and then we'll use our nicknames as well, right? Masse, if we're sending this email to uh, a colleague in a formal setting, this would be absolutely inappropriate <laughs> because um, we're. Not only is the tone extremely casual, masse, it's very demanding as well. Pero so the information where they're asking, I need the phone number and email addresses. That's demanding information from someone that you work with or someone who might be your superior. Um, so that would be an inappropriate tone. And then also send it to me asap. Send it to me asap. We um, even if we're working together, asking someone to send it to you asap. It can be a little rude, right? Uh, we don't want someone demanding something like that from us, um, so we wouldn't want to do the same thing uh, when we're uh, communicating with someone else. So again, let me uh, example here. It's just an example of uh, a more professional toned uh, message compared to a casual message. Um, and again, keeping in mind the short forms, acronyms, emojis that we use. There's a time and place for everything. So Miss B in this scenario is not our girlfriend, but if she were, then it would be completely fine to send her those emojis. All right. So, uh, to um, in this day and age, again, social media is is a part of our day to day life, right? Uh, social media can be here, and we mean we're talking about Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Snapchat, all different things. Um, must say, uh. All of these platforms, again, it's uh, it's necessary. Uh, we have to use them. It's a great way to stay connected. It's a great way to stay relevant, especially now that we are um, our our cohort 
uh, is looking to apply for graduate studies or you're looking to apply for jobs, what uh, social media he point mo as well in dona um uh, at this point in your lives. Um say everything again it's a double edged sword. Through social media man piam hi ngaya atanzu we have to be extremely aware of our posts. Til kan post pia ngian and know that you are uh essentially you are portraying your image, your image uh to the world, your image to the people who are looking at your um who are going to be looking at Uh, your work. So again, whether it's WhatsApp, whether it's Facebook or Instagram, um, we have to be very careful. Um, uh, University can talk like on we interviewed for our student positions. Masa, we also interviewed for uh, uh, professors um, position. So uh, we were in a unique gun office because we were in a unique um, place where we worked with both faculty and staff of the university. So Uh, hiring committee can uh, interview process can what did we do we looked at their social media so we looked to see if they had instagram accounts or facebook accounts um, essentially we did some stalking right <laughs> um, i think people are familiar with uh, with perhaps stalking some maybe some friends or some interests masa we would also stalk and companies do this they will stalk they will look at your uh, social media profiles Um, so if someone presented themselves in a very professional manner and we thought, wow, this person is going to be such a great fit for our organization, for our university. But then we looked on their social media and they told a completely different story about themselves. So they lost that opportunity because of the image that they were portraying of themselves. Um, so again, social media is um, a very, very important tool. Um, I say it's a double-edged sword, um, and uh, we should be aware of how we're using it. All right, that's my public service announcement <laughs> for today. All right, do not yan again. Uh, we are webinars are um, webinars are crucial, right? Uh, right now we're meeting um, on Zoom. We've met through Google Meet before. Um, there's so many platforms uh, where we're communicating with each other. And so when we are uh, engaging in uh, any type of webinar meeting, there are certain etiquette that we should follow. So I, today we cannot have a communication session without talking about webinars. And so webinar, there are certain things that we should keep in mind. First uh, would be our sound. So what is in the ambient area? Um, we should, if we're participating in a, a webinar, especially if we're going to be a speaker or Uh, we're going to be leading the session. Sound is important. What are we wearing? Our clothing is extremely important. Again, it's all part of the image um, that we're portraying. Uh, angle. Pohi poi mo em ema. We want to be careful about where we're putting our our uh, our camera. Our um, we want to make sure that we're finding a very flattering angle. It's really easy to carry it just in our hand. Maybe so we'll just hold it lower a little bit. The angle from down there might not be so flattering for us or really attractive for the people who are watching through who are going to be viewing. So, um, and, and we've been a part of some webinars where unfortunately people aren't so aware of that. So, Um, let's take a lesson from them and and make sure that we're we're being aware of that. So angle is important, clothing is important. Can light setting bohi poi mo poka how we're looking, um, how we look in the in the um, to the viewers. Um, so on an online meeting etiquette can be here. I think everyone is so good about that now. Through Zoom can enter don in can video camera te ka can off. But ah clang kuin so ni can microphone po can off china through so. And then sometimes um, it might turn on occasionally. We just have to be aware of that. Um, so these are the types of things that we're talking about. And then also if someone is screen sharing, annotation then offload. So so just little things like that um, uh, we want to keep in mind. But I think everyone, uh, our, our professors at HBC have been really good at training our students. Um, everything seems very smooth.
All right. So what else? Uh, about communication. So we've been talking about great communication, right? Different things that we want to keep in mind when we're talking about communication. But what are some things that can affect communication? Um, some of us are uh, more comfortable with speaking in front of other people than others. Um, me in um, me extroverts, extroverts would be really good at communication. And I must say that's not always the case. Um, you know, people can have stage fright, they can be anxious. Um, previous experience is extremely important for uh, effective communication. Um, do not pay it's on in. Um, uh, we're all on lockdown mode. Um, so most of us are probably communicating with each other through written communication as opposed to face-to-face -face verbal communication. Um, there are studies now that share, <laughs> that talk about how the younger generation, especially, they get extremely nervous uh, when it comes to face-to-face -to -face communication. So phone that kind of platform, there's a barrier between the other person. So when there's a barrier, we feel a little safer. So when we come face-to-face -face with other people to talk to them, um, that can be very, um, that can bring up a lot of anxiety for people. So uh, practicing, uh, even if it's just with family members, practicing even just speaking with your family can go a long way. Um, for the uh, for for later on um, again practice makes comfort so in language barrier he um and I always give myself as an example um, uh, I'm very comfortable as you can see speaking in English um, it is the you know the language that I grew up with miso chong po kan kan family atan kan mang thau na in hey miso kaman piang yan in an na lo zia hi in shume nga tira ka soya ngin du tu samen kan mang thei lo wa um, I'm, I'm trying, I'm, uh, I'm reading a lot, I ask people for help, um, uh, I carry a dictionary around with me, well, I do all these things so that I can try to improve my language skills so that my communication, so that language won't be a barrier for me. At the same time, do not son, um, uh, we can use Mizo as much as possible. Uh, once we step out of Mizoram, what language will we use? Primarily English. And so I completely understand why uh, English may be a language barrier for uh, a lot of people. It's, it's my story with Mizo. Uh, and so I feel people when I, when, uh, I see them or hear them uh, trying to present in English, but they're not getting the words out there. Uh, uh, I feel you and I want to help you with that. And so Ginipo, we, we have sessions, co-partner um, and we, we do sessions, uh, we lead sessions on uh, English conversational skills. So this is something if you're interested in developing that uh, area um, and that skill, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. We can talk about that after also. Masse, uh, when we're talking about communication, um, language barrier is a big thing. And so if that's a barrier for you, we should take steps to improving it. So these are things that can affect communication. Um, and it's important, again, just as we talk about Atira Khan self-awareness, Khan Soyang Khan, we started off with knowing and talking about what our strengths are. In the same way, communication, Khan 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 when we talk about communication, we want to know also about the positive sides of communication, but also what can affect it so that we can do better, so we can become more effective communicators. All right, so now uh, at this point, we've talked about self-awareness, we've talked about effective communication, and so now when we put those two together, you are primed, you are in a place now um, to, to step onto the next level, and what's that? Now we're going to talk about interview skills. We cannot go on an interview without first being self-aware and without first practicing our communication skills. So now everyone in this group is extremely self-aware <laughs> and has excellent communication skills. Um, so now we're all going to go uh, and learn about uh, how, to, how to be a rock star interviewer. All right, so when we talk about interviewing, let's first, talk about why do we interview? Why is the interview process even necessary? Um, first of all, uh, the interview process is an opportunity for the company or organization 
uh, to assess if you will be a fit for their if you will be a fit for their culture for their company but at the same time you as the interviewee you are also interviewing that company and that organization to find out if it is the right place for you if it matches your goals if it is the type of place where you want to be so just as much as they are interviewing you you are also interviewing them so keep that in mind uh, interview skills comes to so on at this point if you're going on the interview that means that you already have a great resume and you've already submitted your great cover letter as well hey funny he again um we're assuming that you have all of these down if you do not yet at this point have a resume or have a, a draft cover letter for whatever organization or graduate program you're going to work on again um i'm happy to offer my services um, if you uh, want some guidance on that, again, that's a completely separate uh, session altogether. So, so um, if you would like some feedback on resume writing or uh, your cover letter writing, uh, you can feel free to reach out to me also. I said today, we're just going to focus um, on interviewing. So interview, and again, we've talked about why interview. I said there are essentially four steps in an interview process. There's, uh, sorry, three. Three, Omnilana, four. Uh, so there are three steps. There's the pre-interview, the interview itself and the post interview. What do we mean by pre interview? Interview before you go on the interview, you can homework and TMI. Okay, so we have to study the organization or the company that we're going to interview with. Um, uh, you want to study the job description, especially. So, what kinds of um, roles will you have to play? What kinds of things will you have to do in that position? Uh, you want to prepare for potential questions, right? And you also want to know why are you interested in that organization? Um, at this point, again, uh, so next we're saying, yes, I want a job. I'm going to apply for all jobs. So you go through the um, position thick and then maybe there's a classified section. I know there's um, a Facebook page, Shang Shang website there. So uh, wherever we go, we see all these job opening, job opening, or job. You send your resume and you throw in your application for each and every one of them. You get called for an interview. You don't even know what organization it is. You don't even know what that job entails. That will already, uh, might as well not even go for that interview uh, if that's the, the situation. I know it's very exciting. You want to cast as wide a net as possible. Um, uh, the biggest thing that you can do that will help you uh, prepare uh, for the interviews, doing your homework, studying the organization, knowing what their goals and missions are and why, why you are interested in that position. Again, pre-interview uh, stage on online, we have to prepare what to wear. Um, there's so many different tips uh, online that you can even, um, so many resources online. Um, what is advisable, what's not, and it's different for depending, uh, depending on the, um, uh, de depending on the, the organization uh, environment. Um, if you, for example, if you're going to apply for um, uh, a, a position, Manikan, Bu Joseph, and Agripunur, Lampang, Topikara, and Soyatiro. So if you're going to go and apply for maybe um, a, a position, a very interesting position that has to do more with working with farmers, and you go in with your full business suit, that might not be the best outfit to wear for that position. Say that business suit would be really great for uh, perhaps a more clerical or an office job, right? So depend. round of interviews so that uh, having that information we should um, keep in mind all of the online webinar etiquette that we talked about before so on and again practice makes perfect mm -hmm. whether you're practicing for a presentation you're practicing for an interview uh, prepare some questions have someone run through those questions with you practice how you will answer those questions that is extremely important Okay, it's on an interview, so you don't want again. Um, 
when you are preparing for the interview, uh, you want to have a copy of your CV, your resume. You want to have, a, if you have a business card, um, if that's relevant for you, you want to have that contact information. Um, introductions and handshake at the Natantu, again, might not be so relevant in today's uh, or post pandemic world. I don't think we'll go around shaking hands very, uh, very soon. Masim, mm, this, uh, for me, your handshake is probably one of the most lasting first impressions that you will be able to make. Uh, so when you go in, when we do come back to a world where we're giving handshakes, just keep this in mind. Uh, when you go give a handshake to someone, you want to make sure you're giving a firm, strong handshake. Don't want to squeeze the person. Uh, one of the worst impressions that you can probably leave is giving someone a very limp handshake. Hmm. Have you ever gone to shake someone's hand and they just give you a limp hand? It's probably one of the worst impressions that you'll be able to leave on someone. So um, when we go back into our handshaking world again, uh, keep that in mind. All right, Sonin, uh, when, we're, when you're preparing your answers for the questions, you want to focus on your skills. You want to give specific examples. Um, Con presentation, concession, concern, con, and we talked about self-awareness. The reason we ask those questions, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are things you want to improve upon? Um, we have to be able to answer those questions because Nakina interview session, uh, interview setting, uh, so we have to be able to answer those questions. Um, when you're at an interview session uh, situation, you want to discuss what you've learned, um, either from your previous position or as a student. Uh, focusing on transferable skills is really important as well. Um, talk about what excites you about the role. Why do you want to join their position, uh, their company, their organization? Um, if you had a negative experience in your previous uh, employment, um, you know, don't talk about those bad experiences, rather talk about it as challenges that you've overcome. You don't want to talk badly ever about your former organization because that potential organization that you're uh, interviewing for, they will think to themselves, hey, if this person is talking badly about that organization they were with, what will they say about, about our organization? So those are all uh, impressions that will be uh, maybe subconsciously leaving with people. All right, so during the interview itself, uh, you want to make sure that you're keeping your answers to the point. Um, it's really um, tempting to be able to give all the information at once. Masse, you want to avoid giving long-winded answers. You don't want to give short, um, short two-sentence answers or you know two-word answers either. Masse. Uh, answer the questions fully without straying too far off the topic. Um, Henry, this is a big point. Prepare questions for the interviewers as well. Um, when you go on an interview, uh, probably one of the last questions that they'll probably ask you is, do you have any questions for me? Now, if you say, no, I don't have any questions. Uh, what that implies is that you're not really interested on homework until okay they must not really be interested versus if we have some questions prepared it shows that we have taken the time to to learn about them it shows that we are, have a keen interest in their organization and it shows that we are um that we actually uh, want to be part of that organization. Okay, so in body language, um, again, this could be a completely separate session in itself. Uh, body language, are you making eye contact? Are you smiling? Um, you don't want to smile all the time because then people might think that there's something wrong. Uh, giving appropriate facial expressions at the right time. Uh, using, um, sitting up straight. Uh, if someone you know, it's very video. What's on in a long Kerala? Me, Tia, must say having your arms crossed, you know, across your chest all the time. That shows that you are disinterested, or it could show that you're very nervous. So practicing where you put your hands is also really important. Um, body language. A lot of people can assess how you're feeling um, by the way you carry yourself. Okay, so uh, again, all of these things can be practiced in the pre-interview stage. 
let's look at some potential interview questions. Um, the on screen, I hear and I'll just read through them really quickly. All right. Uh, some potential questions. These are some common questions that some uh, employers uh, will ask. Um, very famous. Tell me about yourself. You're all, so tell me about yourself. And they don't mean, oh, my name is um, Zora Moyralte and I am this year old and I was born here and I grew up there and uh, my favorite hobby is you know, watching Netflix and Kaka, they're not trying to find, they don't want that information. So tell me about yourself and the in, what are your strengths? What do you value? Uh, why are you interested in this position? So um, uh, what are things, key experiences that you can, what is your value added essentially, right? Uh, into their organization or their company, that's what they're looking for. Um, they want to know if you can coherently first of all right uh, string a sentence together um, and uh, when they ask you this question they want to know if there's something interesting about you um, and and if you'll be a good fit for their position all right so what are your greatest strengths what are your weaknesses uh, why are you interested in working here uh, what uh, why are you looking for this new job opportunity um, what do you know about this organization uh, describe a difficult situation you've ex experienced at work how did you handle it? Uh, where do you see yourself in five to 10 years? Do some of these questions look familiar? Yeah, I hope they do. These are some of the questions that we asked during the self-awareness uh, when we were talking about self-awareness, right? Again, everything starts from self-awareness, knowing, uh, knowing about our strengths, our weaknesses, and how we react to situations. Um, here are some more questions that interviewers will often ask. Um, how did you help your previous employer save time and money? Again, this might not be so relevant for us right now who are graduating from our bachelors, but these are things that we can also prepare for, for later on. Um, what do you look for in a boss or a supervisor? Uh, how do you handle criticism? This is so important. Um, why do you think you're a good fit for this position? Uh, can you give examples of how you've handled stress at work? Again, if we haven't had previous work experience, um, you can alter that to saying, how, how have you handled stress uh, throughout your studies, right? Tunahian, we're all, uh, you are wrapping up the first part of your career. Tunahian, and we're all students. That are being a student, that is part of the beginning of your career. Um, and so the way that you've handled your career as a student will really um, uh, tell how you will handle things in your work life as well. So uh, you can do a lot of reflection about how you have been as a student, uh, working as a student. Uh, some other questions that interviewers might ask, um, what can you bring to the job that others can't? Um, what do you think we can do differently here at this organization? Um, and again, do you have any questions for me, right? And Hemi, Zona, Anzo, all of us now in this session will say yes, right? Because we're all going to have prepared questions for the interviewers. All right, so these are some questions, again, depending on the industry that you go and apply for, whether it's graduate studies or whether it's, um, uh, if you're looking to uh, interview with a private company, um, these are some common questions. It's helpful to prepare answers to these questions. Uh, um, again, this is not, a quick you know, formula that you can use all the time. I'd say it's a good base to start off. All right, so what kinds of questions can you ask when, when you're wrapping up an interview? Again, screen at hand can tar langa, masay kan tiar twa Can you describe a typical day in this type of role? They're also, you've gone and applied for a position. Ama kan suyang kan, and yes, they're interviewing you to find out if you will be a fit for their organization. Masay, you're also interviewing them to see if you want to even work there. If that is a graduate program that you see yourself thriving in, or if that is an organization where you see um, uh, yourself working at. Um, how would you describe the work environment? How long have you been with this organization and what makes you stay? Um, Duna, if there are some of us who are interested in being teachers, uh, we can simply ask some of our professors too, right? Oh, why did you get into this field? Why did you get into this? Um, uh, industry uh, and what makes you stay as a teacher? 
uh, what are some short and long-term goals for the company or organization? And what are some of the organization's initiatives regarding professional development? Gimani growth, so if we are looking to join an organization, we want to see is there room for growth? Can career growth than opportunities omagem may baka can professional growth ka and why poimo and do they think about um their employers uh, their employees as well? So we want to be part of an organization that will um care for us also, right? Care for our development. Okay, so uh at this point you have done your homework, you have organ uh researched your organization, you've gone for the interview, you ace the interview. Um, now you've walked out the door of the interview, what do you do? You want to think about your post interview. So we said that there are three parts to an interview, um, the pre interview, the interview itself and the post interview. It's extremely important to leave a thank you message. Um, do not in written thank you messages. They can 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 vada China ma se do not an email uh, is really probably what's the best, right? Um, so sending a quick thank you message, expressing your gratitude for the opportunity to meet with them um, during your thank you message. You can also uh, reiterate some things that excite you about the position and why you in, why you interviewed with them. Um, but keep it short. You don't want to send a whole essay um, and make sure you want to keep it uh, professional as well. Um, and uh, even though it's extremely tempting to keep calling the HR to find out about your status. Did I do well? How when will I hear from you again? Uh, that can be very tempting. Because if you call them incessantly, then it can also uh, work against you. <laughs> All right. So at this point, um, we have talked about, uh, we started with self-awareness because in order to be effective communicators and to ace and interview, we had to first start with knowing ourselves first. What, what um, do we value? What are our strengths? What are our weaknesses? What are areas where I can grow? What are some things about me and my experiences that will really bring value to a graduate program that I'm going to apply for or to an organization that I'm going to apply for? Describe Donia share screen Everything <laughs> 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 I think it's okay now. I mean, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. That happens sometimes. Uh, <laughs> all right. So um, uh, we talked about knowing ourselves, knowing what value we will add to either the graduate program or the organization we'll be applying for. And also keeping in mind that self-aware people are more confident. We're better leaders, we're better team members as well. Um, in terms of effective communication, um, what we mean by that is um, how we're able to share information with others and also understand what is being shared with us. So um, communication is a two-way street, how we're giving information, but so also how we're participating in that two-way street. Are we being active listeners? Are we showing positive uh, cues by our body language? Um, all of these things are important for uh, when we think about effective communication. And lastly, um, something that we'll all be interested in as uh, graduating seniors um, are interview skills. We talked about how there are three steps, pre-interview, interview, and post-interview. Um, the big difference here is that uh, doing homework on the organization or the graduate program that you're going to apply for is really important, um, knowing about the uh, why being able to articulate why you're interested in the position and what makes you a great candidate and why they should hire you um, and being able to convey that throughout your interview is going to be really uh, key um, for when and if they hire you. Mm, so I'm in, uh, I've spoken with a lot of my uh, friends here also who, um, who are on the hiring end um, of, of interviews. 
um, we've they've shared that they've noticed that a lot of people uh, come into the interview without really knowing about the organization. Well, that's why can uh, homework they have stress us that aim in the because we have to know about the organization. We have to know about the position. So I can skills like an experience that he will have so many of such a varied experience. How can you tailor your experiences um, according to the position and the roles and responsibilities for the, the position that you're applying for? Um, so I'm, uh, again, leaving that lasting impression of knowing um, uh, so that the, the people who are interviewing you again, uh, will know, will want to hire you. So what is your value added? That's the biggest thing that I can, um, that, that I can impart with you today. Um, and so keeping all of this in mind, um, the importance of self-awareness, um, the importance of effective communication and now being prepared with your uh, interview skills. Um, I will leave you with this lasting thought um, or challenge rather, um, we are, all about to graduate. We're outgoing students of Shangbana College. You've had a wonderful education. Um, you are equipped with a whole host of information. And now you are about to be our future leaders. Um, so I would challenge you and ask you what moves you, what drives you, what motivates you. And um, are you able to answer this? If not, then I would encourage you to start from some of the questions that we posed at the beginning of the session. Um, take some time to uh, really, you know, know what what it gets you excited, what what things you value, um, and then think about how that will. Um, uh, now that you're equipped with skills and information uh, from your college, what can you do now with all of those things uh, to make your impact in the world? So I'll leave you also with my contact information. Hey, email Ania if anyone would like some feedback or if you have any questions, um, address Pelopon. Please feel free to reach out to us. So, and this is our um, IG handle if you would like to get connected with us through Instagram as well. Um, and then again, as we are um, all graduating, getting ready for our next step in the world, um, I would like to leave you with. With this, um, with this thought, uh, this is um, when when I was about to make a big life decision myself a couple of years ago. Uh, I took a lot of comfort and a lot of um, encouragement from this verse. So commit to the Lord, whatever you do, and He will establish your plans. So I would like to leave you with this um, with this thought and the challenge of asking you what moves you. All right, so what moves you? What impact will you make? Um, and uh, I'll leave some time for questions. I'll leave it, I'll turn things back over to our host. Um, thank you so much for, for your kind attention and again, for this opportunity to, to meet with you and to, uh, to, to speak with you during this uh, session, um, during the certificate program. Um, please feel free to reach out for any questions. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to be uh, of help for anyone um, in the future. All right, thank you again so much. Turn things over to the host. Thank you so much, me. Um, we're going to have some time for questions and answers now. I mean, there's a question in the chat box um, from Ming Pansang. How will we describe our strength? Can you answer this for us before we ask others to, for their questions? Okay, great. So thank you so much for your question. This is really great. Um, so how can how will we describe our strength? Um, first, we have to know what our strengths are. Uh, and it's different for everyone. Um, so what do you consider to be your strength? For example, mm, are you a good listener? Are, um, are you creative? Are you a hard worker? Um, mm, are you really good at drawing? You know, these are all different strengths and we all have different types of strengths. And um, so the first, the first thing that I can say is during the self-reflection time, um, being aware of what we're really good at, that's important. Um, and then once we get to the interview stage, right? 
and say, how will we describe our strengths? Um, you want to tailor our strengths according to the job that you're applying for. So for example, if we are applying for, mm, let's say we're applying for a secretarial job, through a, a clerical job at an office. Um, I might want to highlight uh, the fact that I'm a really good note taker. I think, oh, and let's say I'm, so I'm like you, I'm graduated, I've just graduated from HBC and I've, I'm applying for uh, a clerical job, a secretarial job at an office. Um, I might talk about how uh, throughout school, I was such a, throughout college, I was such a great note taker. My friends would always ask me for my notes because I always wrote so clearly and um, I was always able to get the point across. Um, so I really enjoy writing and that will be a really great um, value added for, for this position because taking and con uh, typing, maybe that's part of the uh, the job description as well. <laughs> um, talking about your strengths and but aligning it also with the position that you're applying for is going to be very important. Um, so again, um, hey, I'm so glad that you, um, I'm so glad that you've uh, raised this because um, we've done some sessions with um, some young adults um, and some young professionals also. And when I asked them, what are your strengths? What are you good at? Um, which is great. It's really great if there's even that, okay, you're a hard worker. That's a huge strength. Going beyond, that's a really good place to start. Beyond that, what are some things that you feel you are good at? I think. Um, I would challenge everyone to think about that and maybe can context that can social context that me focus I don't know um, I'm glad that you've raised this point I hope I am did I answer your question need can I add something to that I think you know that one of the question that you know this kind of question what are your strengths because how do you draw the line between um, talking about your strength and bragging about yourself I think that's the that's the distinction that they that they wanted to ask. Hey, in sweet hey na, real ruhi enge kan cheni mo mizo pay to ti tapang in sweet he kan dey in sweet he ni dey he kan she eme ma kami line ka entin nge how do we? I think that's the question that they were trying to ask. Okay. With that. All right. Oh, I love that distinction. Atanto ni e apoy mo lutto gani. May I ask one question, please? Oh, uh, yes, yes. Um, okay. So, thing is that, no, just one minute, just one minute. One thing I'm telling here. The problem is that the students are not coming up from their slot to expose mm -hmm. themselves, to they get shy, uh, to give answer if it is wrong they will be loved one among their friends. That is the problem here, no? So the exposure will come from the classroom, even from primary, from the KG, primary, then middle, then high, everywhere. So when it will start exposing to teacher, then slowly they will expose better way, you know, they will learn something. That is the problem here I am facing. If you'll ask some questions, they will get size to stand also that is to happen so shoot, it will come up it will come up when we will teach them in the class that uh, it is not like that you clear your you know doubts in this inside that class fast then they will expose themselves they will they will become there to give the answer so when they are facing in terms whenever i i'm sitting as an expert i got it that the, they are not exposed they are not expert to give answer mm. Getting on that is the thing. It is to happen. Some other things you leave it. They are not listener first. They are not good listener. They are not listening to the you know the expert. So they are not properly listening and they are not giving properly first. Second, they are not having habit to expose themselves. That is the thing. No. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, sir, for your comments. Um, I think. Uh, our, our observations from our professors and our experts 
are really, really valuable. Um, and I think we can all, you know, those of us who are attending the session today, we can take this as a challenge um, and, and say, you know, what can, what can I do um, uh, to uh, maybe encourage my juniors, right? To, to have the courage to stand up. Um, people will often, uh, what we've often heard is that um, uh, we get compared a lot between students from the Northeast and students in uh, maybe the rest of India. Um, we are typically shy by nature, right? We don't want to say anything that offends people. Um, mm. We also don't want to be wrong, like you said, sir, right? Uh, we hate it when we're wrong because we don't want the person next to us uh, ridiculing us or making you know, fun of us. Um, it's, it's a, and because Mizo is typically, we, we, we do like to joke on each other a lot. It's a really fun part yeah, of our community, but it can also work on the other side. <laughs> yeah. So, the so when, um, when I used to... Now, our duty our school teachers as a teacher from the primary school to the university, we have to give them this idea that you clear your doubts inside the classroom. Mm. When these things will start working, then slowly they will become smart. But I'm telling you, you are getting, you know, dress, say dress, they are turning into the interview room, all other things you learn, they will learn slowly when they will come up, their things will come up. But thing is that they are not smart to talk yet. Some, some of them, not all, certainly some of them only. So this is basic things what I'm telling. Those are smart, they are getting job immediately. So this is the basic thing. So you have to focus on that, that mostly I'm telling you. So if you, if you clarify that part to the students, from your point of view, I think this, they will get it better than me. So um, uh, for our cohort today, um, we are graduating students, right? So we're on our, in our sixth semester. Um, we're about to uh, get a government Shambhana College certificate in the next few weeks, right? So now this group uh, that as uh, described, um, they still have a chance to, to work on those skills. Um, next, their classroom is going to be in their community, right? Maybe they're serving different roles in their, in their home, in their community. So uh, challenging themselves to ask questions in whatever platform they have, that's going to be, I think, uh, a big thing that they can do um, for, for their growth. Um, but in terms of what Sir has just pointed out, this is something that also is um, uh, like I, this is something that is I'm very passionate about. Um, it would be amazing if from the first semester or second semester even, we can have these types of sessions where we, and maybe I, I could be wrong, perhaps I think HBC is really on the, the full thinking end of these types of uh, sessions. I know you coordinate these types of programs for your students too, but um, having sessions outside of the classroom also where we develop those types of skills um, for students is really important. Um, this is uh, a big passion project. Um, encouraging uh, students to, like Sarah has said, ask questions in the classroom is really important. So, but before they even do that, we have to create a culture where it's okay to, to encourage people, to let people know that it's okay to ask questions or answer questions and get it wrong, right? It's okay to stand up. It's okay to share your, um, to share your opinion. And right now, our society um, is that we have so much respect for our elders that we oftentimes don't want to seem like we are, um, we're challenging their authority or that we are uh, challenging uh, what they're saying. Um, but I think uh, coming to a place where we can help our students understand that there's a time place for everything. And that just as Sir said, learning really comes from, you know, 
talking, first answering questions, and especially if we get the question wrong, that is where the learning will happen the most. You know, that's where our brain grows the most. That's where we really grow the most. Um, and so encouraging that kind of behavior and that kind of mindset, I think is um, something that will be key to helping us all later on. And so I challenge our group here today, um, our graduating students today, if you have younger siblings or if all of your juniors, um, we know that the HBC community is really strong and that's really, the network is so good. So encouraging them at whatever chance you have to encouraging your, your juniors to ask questions in class, to stand up, to, to uh, really participate um, and letting them know that that's where they will grow the most. Um, I think that's something that we can all do, a, a big challenge that I would also have for our cohort here. Um, so thank you, sir, for raising that. Um, it really is an important point. Um, so uh, one of the questions before that we had was, um, you know, when we talk about strengths, um, again, as Mizos, we, we, hey, Sopona Lampang, we love in, right? Because we, we oftentimes, um, if we're talking about what we're good at, it's very easy to think that, oh, I look good, right? Um, but there is a difference. Um, of course, if, um, if you brag, if you go on and on about your accomplishments, what you've done, what you're good at, nobody wants to listen to a braggart. Masse, uh, self-reflection now, Kanin, no one's going to judge you when you're doing your own self-reflection, right? Um, and especially if you share those uh, comments, those, um, uh, those types of things with your close friends and family, um, they will not judge you. So I think, um, the first step is being able to identify in Sina Kung Su and Khan, what are we good at? Um, even though we may not be so strong at voicing out those things, um, at least taking some time to think about what we're good at. Um, but then again, communication, there's a way to communicate in a Zopo way, and there's a way to communicate in a very humble way as well, right? Um, there is a fine line. Um, I'm sure everyone will automatically think about that other negative end of the spectrum might say, um, just because we're talking about what we're good at, the experiences that we've gained, it doesn't always mean that we're being a braggart. Um, so I, I hope that that addressed that part of the question uh, to an extent. Um, um, I think we, again, talking about our culture, we have to move our culture um, away from thinking that just because we talk about our strengths, it means that we're being proud and more comfortable. Um, and it will start with you. It will start with this cohort. Um, I see a question in the chat box. Umim, uh, can we know what motivates you? You motivate me. <laughs> Actually, this group here motivates me. Um, I. Uh, I truly, um, I've also had a chance to reflect on, on a lot of different things, Masse. Uh, what motivates me is being able to equip um, and help other people. I am so passionate about helping other people reach their potential. Um, and uh, that was a big motivation for my coming home here. Um, and it, it continues to, uh, you know, in everything that I do. So for example, even, even working one-on-one -on -one with a young student, helping them uh, learn their ABCs, you know, that's something, a very, very simple example, but by helping them with their foundation of learning their ABCs and learning their phonetics, we are equipping them uh, so that they'll be able to communicate effectively later on. So being able to find you know, knowing your why, everyone keeps going back to that, right? Knowing what motivates you, knowing your why, um, being able to, to put that into everything that we do um, is really important. So what motivates me, what motivates me is being able to uh, empower other people, to equip other people, to really help people reach their potential. That's a huge thing that motivates me. Nagram uh, Tuang, did I answer your question? <laughs> Right. 
if you have questions, But box English I'm so I'm so glad. Yeah. Any questions? Okay. Anyway, she has um, given her email address. If you have any person inquiries, uh, anything that you want to ask her personally, you can always reach out to her on her email. Um, thank you so much, Meem. Um, if we don't have any more questions, I'm going to go to the last part of our program. That is the vote of thanks from um, I get my colleague, Sir Becker, Pandit Becker. Mm. You can't make him. No. And it's in Khanin Gani Chosh person Khanin. Pre interview a Khanin what to wear. I don't care. So long, son. Miss B. Miss Baby Tin Pona. Inge ka wear don kate he. Country wear the together nest. Jacket ha. Elam ha. I'm here. They can logo on money. Now, they've been coming in Chene. Oh. Okay. First of all, I am very grateful to have an opportunity to give a vote of thanks in this webinar. In spite of a tight schedule, I would like to give thanks to our resource person, Ms. Zoram Moiralte, Mizoram Consultation Group, for sparing us her precious and valuable time and share us a lecture on interview and community communication skills. It was indeed an inspiring, motivational, and heartbreaking speech. I hope of, all of us can enjoy it. At the end, can say be locked down at Nichina to so it's a career rule on Langley, Cave, M, M, and the Missouri can say look on that to lie results for a class admission can have the donor Minaran, Minaran may may. Third division, second division, even the first division, pon seed and some title. So, bang in a beat in can student like a man who's on some pop. Hill kata do like a VMM to like a VMM to don't be an ordinary person, be an extraordinary person. Ordinary, per, ordinary person, ni a talk to all. You have to be an extraordinary person. Extraordinary person, the two zone, time magna dedication, commitment, zong zong, to not so ho zong zong, can make vekangai, at like hakaron to it, ni locally. Then you know, miss, I want to share one of my boys, my little boys, like to hear this one. One is 16 years old, and another one is 18 years old. They would like to attend this meeting. But unfortunately, their time clashes because at this very same moment, they are having an online classes. So anyway, if time permits, our whole family would have to watch through YouTube channel whenever we have. Thanks again. I would also like to thank our principal, Pular Ruchuang Pachuo, Vice Principal Pumu Pumu. Usually, to organize these important programs and all other faculty of commerce and economic department. Thanks again to the, all the hosts, my colleagues, and all the participants who attended these valuable programs. Thanks again. Oh, 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 sorry. Last but not the least, I would like to give thanks to the Almighty God for giving us this great opportunity. With this, I conclude my vote of thanks. Thank you. But till pakhatsya, so you can do miso trong in, can study in the khan, in low TV, do chan in low TV, don dia. Le lok sana. Euro 20 ya khan, Portugal le Ronaldo katran, eh, eh, ma, antla ah, karil ruwa na, eh, eh, mezan po kamuyil thay lo wa. So an, England le Germany an in khel do na, Germany an he karil lo kabay say lo wani. But miraculously, can you don't any England So I'm going to give three cheers for England. Kati Idan Turzu, in Loti Vedu, in Loti Yang. 
one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. England, that's how it's done. Oh, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. England, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. England, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. England, okay, thank you, bye-bye. Thank you so much, Sir Pekka. That was so much fun. <laughs> department to and Britannia and me. Thank you so much. We hope to see you soon again. And thank you all. Thank you to all our viewers. And goodbye for now. Please stay tuned for tomorrow's uh, next personality development program. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. You did so thank great. Thank you and best of luck all of, all of you. Thank you again so much. Have a great day, everyone.